Okay, so we're rolling. So uh, right here, there's going to be theme song you never heard before. And uh, does it know. sound like gay porn music? <laughs> because Probably. if it does, then I'm not interested. Okay. <laughs> and uh, how, how about I wanna, that? I want to actually hear like. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't uh, want to hear that. What is your um, the logo, bro? The logo look, looks hot, bro. I, I mean, for for something you guys knocked up in like no time. Like we we had just talked about it, and like ten minutes later, you're like, "Bow." Yeah. I was like, "All right, hey, fucking that's, get her, son." That's how the team. That's how the team works, man. Dude, that that's why I'm I'm super happy. Uh, I'm doing this with well, not only because of me and you just have good conversations, but like you've got a full crew, which is a fucking great thing. I'm yeah. very grateful that yeah, you, so uh, am I, I am too, <laughs> that you were, uh, harboring the, the, the brunt of that. Yes. So it is, that's why I will, we are set up for, it. it is our pleasure. Um, I have a quite, do you consider yourself an entrepreneur? Someone wants to know, uh, you know, I never did. Mm -hmm. But more recently, because I've got my fingers in so many different things, I kind of think that's probably the most apt description. Absolutely. I don't have another word for it, right? Absolutely. Like, I hate the word influencer. Um, it's actually funny. We, uh, I was at the that beard brand retreat. Did I tell you about that beard no, brand no, retreat no. I went to? <laughs> that sounds like some influencer shit, though, Jerry. Uh, yeah, well, well right. You, <laughs> you have a beard, <laughs> and you were at a beard. I'm sorry. What was this thing called? It was a, a company beard brand. A big, they're big uh, mm -hmm. in the the beard care product, uh, and they have a bunch of people that are under their that they sponsor that are all under their their they brand, all have so beards, to speak. I'd say. One guy didn't actually, oh uh, but he, he, he was, he was a friend of a guy that came uh, okay. and, and we talked him into growing a beard while we were there. Oh actually. Um, but anyway, so one, you know, we did a bunch of cool stuff. It was really cool. They, they got a, rented this huge property in Austin, Texas. And we, wow. it, was like, uh, it was eight or nine of us. And we all went to this nice property, big pools on five acres. It was a really cool wow. place. And we just, we just hung out for like three days. But anyway, one of the things, one of, of the drinking? guys, uh, moderate okay i wouldn't say i wouldn't say heavy but we did have a uh one like of the guys agenda. from one of the guys from whiskey vault i don't know if you know the of channel of course whiskey i know vault. the channel one of them was a member and he's a great guy i forget yeah, exactly well rex um from whiskey vault mm -hmm. um he lives they they are in austin texas they have like a castle there right yeah 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 so he actually came out one night and did a whiskey tasting with us and he brought a bunch of whiskeys and we did a tasting and he walked us through all of them and stuff it was pretty nice. cool but anyway it's cool off subject, the point was during that one of the guys, because everybody was doing videos while they were obviously, and one of the guys did a video about asking other people in the YouTube space mm -hmm. how they felt about the term influencer. Mm -hmm. And we all agreed that we fucking hate it. Sure. It's just such a grimy sounding word. Because here's the thing. If you're a true influencer, right? Like you're one of these chicks that sits here. Why does it gotta and be a chick? Sorry, that's a bad term. I, I, you no, know, I'm saying, well, you gotta, why does it have to be a girl? Only girls are influencers? No, there's guys too. Okay. But I, specifically, when I think of influencer, okay. I think of the I think of the girls that have like the makeup and the clothes and stuff, and selfies. all day long, all day long, they're sending selfies that just have links of all the clothes that they Sponsored have on and shit like by that. Fashion Nova. Right, right. Those to those me, those are my favorites. Those are the ones that I think of as influencers, right? Okay. Most of the people at that retreat and how I look at myself is yeah. I'm not trying to influence anybody. Yeah. I'm giving you information yeah. about a thing, a product, a, a hobby, a whatever. Yeah. I'm just giving you the information. What you choose to do with it is on you. I'm not trying to influence you. You, you know, I, look, I, I, I get what you're saying, 100%. It's funny at the same time because you are an influencer, right? Sure. But it sure. is it, it's true. And everything evolves, right? So, like, we're coming out of this phase of, like, we don't know what YouTube and podcasts and all these things are about, which they're about ad revenue. And there are those that absolutely chase every check that they can possibly get. And I think that's going to fall into more of your uh, influencer category that you don't want to be associated with, it sounds like. Um, right. And, 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 and there's nothing wrong with that. It's a – No, a no, and I don't mean to – and I definitely don't make it. Don't want to mean sound like I'm talking down on those people. Hey, they're out there grinding and hustling and trying to make a living just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. I respect it. That's just not my mentality. I think they are trying to influence people to click the link and buy the stuff and all this. My thing is, here's the information. I guess it's it's more kind of like the um, 
what's the word I'm looking for? It's the, the, the thought behind it, right? Sure. Like I'm not trying to influence you. I'm trying to give you information on the things that I enjoy. If you like them, great. If you don't, that's also great. Where right. with them, I feel like they're really hitting the trends and and trying to influence people. The buzzwords, the clickbait, the whole. I do right, clickbait right. sometimes on my videos. I think it's. I do it in a funny way. It's fun for me. I'm definitely, you know, not someone that's been invited to any retreats yet. But <laughs> <laughs> it sounds cool. Um, <laughs> hey, by the way, sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. I just lost your visual. I really? don't have you anymore. Okay. Yeah. He doesn't have good me. The can good you hear thing me? About you this. can hear me. I can hear you, but right. I can't see you. All of a sudden, so we're all just, good. So there first, you go. first episode. And our producer Bronx is late. Can you believe that? I don't know these, if he thinks like it's good luck because like Clark. These was always fucking late. Gen Zers. Oh. These fucking guy. Actually, he, is he a Gen Zer? Oh, or he's very Gen. You're probably the youngest guy around. Twenty two. It's funny, man. I'm always busting my kids' balls about that stuff because I've got every generation just about in my house. I think my oldest is technically a Gen Z, and then my youngers I think fall under. What's after Z? I forget I it's some alpha something or other, some, yeah, some Greek but, sounding thing. But I'm always busting their balls about I, I sound like an old man more and more every day. Of course. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yes. I'm always giving them a hard time. I'm like, you kids these days, your work <laughs> ethic, you fucking I used to walk uphill both ways in the snow. <laughs> you know, it's it's this whole thing. <laughs> you know, it's 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 that whole thing, but you know, it is what it is, man. I'm sure that, you know, they'll, they'll all. I'm conscious of sounding. All right. So I've always been a complainer. So there's, oh, like if you're in my inner circle and when I say my inner circle, I mean like, you know, that's like my wife, right? If you're, right. if you like get the real unfiltered part of me, it's a lot of complaining. There's a lot yeah. of, there's always something wrong with some situation. Um, I think that's why me and you get along. Yeah, and and I because I, my wife says the same thing. She's yeah. why are you so angry about everything? I'm not angry. I'm like this is just all bullshit. I'm so angry all the time. For no reason. <laughs> and so so um, the only thing I'm conscious of, and, and I know that that definitely ages a person. Young people don't go around complaining about every, like the service. Wow. You never like in my twenties, I never talked about the service. <laughs> you know, what I mean? no. But speaking of. Uh -huh. These young kids go into a restaurant, oh, see how good a service you oh, get these days. Gen, so, gen, so there's some things that Gen Z uh, just doesn't do well, and I would say the server end of things are, <laughs> you know. I told you that story about I went to a Wendy's the other day and pulled up, and they're like, yeah, we're closing early today. It's like 6 o'clock in the afternoon or in the evening, I guess. They're like, we're closing. I'm like, but it says you're open till like midnight. They're like, yeah. But we don't want to stay any longer, and the next oh crew didn't gosh. show up, so oh we're just going to close. And I'm like, that's, are you fucking kidding me right now? That, that sounds right. Hey, so what uh, were you going to order? Had you? Uh, um, I lost I, you again. I, I can't eat. I can't eat anything, so Probably I have to back. live uh, vicariously through your um, uh, junk food. I I actually, I say the other day, it was actually probably a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. I stopped going to that Wendy's for that very reason. Every time I went, they either had some excuse that something was screwed up. The food, the orders were bad. Dude, the chicken nuggets at that place were like fucking hockey oh, pucks. No. Like they had no, made them and set them there. under a heat lamp for you like nine years. And the thing is, it's a new Wendy's. It's only been there for like, I'd say a year. It's uh -huh. not like this old one that's been around forever right, and just right, run right. down. Right. It's a brand new, nice building and just they've apparently hired just a bunch of dingleberries yeah. because yeah. the service is bad they close early they're always out of shit like it, it all comes disaster. from the top the owner must that might might be his first location you never know uh, well he's a piece of shit too i wonder what it costs to own a wendy's probably a couple million dollars i'm sure these days you think yeah for a wendy's yeah nah. i know at one point you could get a firehouse franchise for a couple you hundred can't thousand, I think it was. Firehouse to Wendy's, as far as you're right. That's go. actually good food, man. So, it's, it's, <laughs> I like Firehouse. I'm, I'm not saying like I've eaten out, out at them like once or twice. Uh -huh. I, I and it it supports firefighters too. I think some of sure, them. and that's cool. We, you know, but what I cool still thing never about Firehouse there, is like, it started here. Where in Jacksonville? I believe that. Well, I say here. I live in St. Augustine yeah. now, but when I was growing up, I lived in Jacksonville, yeah. and yeah, it started there in Jacksonville. I worked at the fifth store that ever opened when i was a teenager really yeah and um the owner still worked there when i started you didn't Chris have and a Robin. beard then 
No, dude. I was well. I had like yeah, chin fuzz. Yeah, they wear a, a net. <laughs> no, they didn't. I, I did have long hair though. Really? Like that was when I surfed all the time. So I just had like you know the '90s goatee. You know, yeah. everybody in the '90s had like the chin goatee and long hair. That that was me in the '90s. So I have. I was gonna like open up with the, with me like with a newspaper. <laughs> like <laughs> that old school yeah yeah so, like, like who the fuck because it's supposed to be okay so we we put pub in the name right and we put pub in the name for a reason because it's supposed to be a place where people can come sit down uh, everybody knows your name there da, you da, go da, 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 da. you have yeah. a beer you have a cigar whatever and right. just chill and and listen to a couple of normal people shoot the breeze because let's be honest uh, at least what I, I'm a YouTube person. I, I live my life on YouTube for better. I do too. Worse. I watch YouTube. Okay. YouTube probably more than anything else. The personalities have gotten so far out of control. It's it's just ridiculous. <laughs> I can't. People I once thought were sane are doing and saying things and having people on that. I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is this is insane. Which leads me to the first uh, uh, thing. So it's it's about an intimate little sit down amongst people yeah to feel like your local it's like, corner pub right we're sitting down we're just shooting the shit chill environment that's talking it. about all kinds of random stuff yeah bitching moaning pissing raving so not always bitching and moaning it's not a negative thing but i'm just saying you know the normal stuff you do at a pub right now i'm watching uh a clip from joe rogan and uh david goggins is it david goggins Goggins. Yeah. I just know him as Goggins. Okay. Yeah, and I so think his name's David. You know who he is. Everyone knows yeah. who he is at this point. Freaking animal. I mean, he's he's um his whole thing is mental toughness, right? Uh, and he is. Yeah. Jesus. And, like, he trains the people that are already mentally tough. Yeah, that dude's an insane person. I mean, uh, in the best way possible. Sure. Navy SEAL. Curses more than both of us. I couldn't believe it. I mean, every other word was F. Oh, F. yeah. It's, okay. it's, it's, it's tremendous. Uh, so, so, okay. So, he's on... Rogan and he mentioned something because I had an experience recently <laughs> where someone for the first time in my you know a business life someone mm -hmm. actually like made a lie actually it's oh. happened before but but people were very vocal about like hey is this true? like people came back hey is this true and it was just a bold-faced lie and of course I had proof thank god oh wow uh but his I thing haven't is, had that fortunately yet but I'm sure it'll happen good. at some point I'll Sto be super yeah. stoked about it it's not fun. So anyway, so you got <laughs> he claims that there is at least one, if not two, Navy SEALs, one okay. of whom which he was deployed with. That created like a whole channel based on the idea of he's not really a Navy SEAL. I mean, he is, though, correct? From what I understand, I mean, he's got I've all never the paperwork. Like... He's got all, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. you know, the, the scars and, you know, he. I can't imagine you could be as loud as this man has been, as successful as this man has been on the back right. of your SEAL experience and not have more than one person call you out. Sure. I mean, in general, the military takes the whole stolen valor thing pretty fucking seriously. And rightly so. If you if you haven't served and put your ass in the line, you 100%. shouldn't try you shouldn't try to play that you did for for the clout when right. you never did shit right? right like people ask me all the time they're like oh were you in the military because i guess i kind of have that ex-military look because <laughs> well i don't mean to yeah. but i guess a lot of guys that get out it's, of the military they got tattoos beards flannels you know yeah, it's the whole thing yeah, yeah, yeah. um it, but I am is always very... Yeah, you do look like you have a, a case of PTSD there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do have PTSD, but it's not for military right, service. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, wow. But... Um, uh, no, I'm always very upfront. Like, no, I never had the honor. Like I never, I was really way too wild in my youth mm -hmm. to relinquish the control you have to, to join the military. So, but here's, here's the question that I have was that he said something like we eat our own on this clip. And I was like, wow. Like, I hate to hear that though, man. Cause Navy I always think Seals, of Navy like you, the human behavior. Why is it comprised of anyone that would like just make up a bold faced lie. I wonder what kind of weird shit that's going on in the background there, man. Cause I've always known Navy SEALs to be pretty honorable guys and it's a brotherhood and they take the brotherhood of that, that membership pretty serious. But we've seen it. We've seen it collide before with the dude from American sniper and, right, right, right. and um, the wrestler uh, governor 
What's his name? I don't know why I'm doing sure. football Sure. If somebody does something that they consider is embarrassing or disgracing to the trident, so to speak, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. they they will tend to persona non grata, you know, that person, and, and they're kind of ousted from the brotherhood or whatnot, sure. from what I understand. But uh, I don't – what did David Goggins do, though, to – you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know – I would have to assume there's some story behind that, or maybe it's just one asshole that's trying to start a problem, and it's sure. it's not the seals in general. Because, like you said, as loud as he is about everything, you think it would be all over the place if it was a real issue, right? I haven't heard anything. You're the first one to tell me about that. Yeah, I thought it was an interesting clip because he included in his next book after that strictly because of this. Um, uh -huh. All of his like paperwork and stuff it was like in, published in his book. Uh, so he like, you know, one of my favorite Navy SEAL guys. Do you even pay attention to that though? Like, if you are him, do you even pay attention to this guy? It do you depends try on your how best loud not it is. to. It depends on how loud it is. It's kind of sure. like okay, that that rolls into an interesting segue, right? Uh, and I'm sure you've dealt with this. I've dealt with this. Um, the other podcast I do. Um, and by the way. I know this is our podcast, but just yeah. to let people know they're listening, this doesn't mean my other podcast is going away. No, it's over. Bro, it's <laughs> over. You signed the contract. It's, That's it. It's done. No, don't say that. People <laughs> freak out. Uh, I, people can do more than one podcast. Me and Taylor never can just seem to link up to get shit going. And yeah. uh, so I, I'll just – I plan on still doing both. That's so it. Whiskey it's, knife, over. It's, it's over. It's over, Taylor. It's <laughs> over. Okay? It's not over. Get it through Whiskey. your head, Taylor. It's <laughs> over. <laughs> You're going to start a riot. I'm telling you, you don't have any people on when I post a video. They're like, where's the whiskey knife Next fight? Next week. And our first guest is Taylor from uh, yeah. <laughs> other popular uh, podcasts like uh, uh, but Knives I Out. Do plan <laughs> Why don't you call it I do Knives plan Out? On, uh, uh, whiskey Knife Fight. Whiskey Knife Fight. That's a cool name. Yeah, well, that it was funny because we just kind of threw it up to the audience, actually, what they thought. And I think that was yeah. one of the suggestions that came back because I was always big into whiskey. He was always big into knives, and we fight all the time, I guess. Yeah. So that, <laughs> that was the thing. Um, but, um, <laughs> but, but no, I do still plan on doing that podcast. This will be just an additional one. But anyway, that wasn't the point. The point was we were talking about uh, you were saying if you were David Goggins, he, do, yeah, how do, do you, you pay you, attention to that? So the two things that I kind of like took away from that was like, wow, our, 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 our ultra high end not just military but s s ultra high because they're very successful in what they do to become a navy seal right so oh they're ultra the best of the best successful people yeah. um do they not operate like I, I guess for me it was like man it was like i guess even people of you kind of thought they were above that yeah like even people of stature will do crazy dumb shit it's crazy to me and then the other thing was is yeah I'm looking out at David Goggins while I'm kind of experienced this in seeing this thing. And it's like, no matter how much you try to play it off, when someone lies about something that you built your reputation on, yeah, it, it hurts. There's no well, way around that. And especially with something as difficult as being a Navy SEAL. You know what I mean? Like That would that's be way a, worse than mine. That's a, I mean, you have to devote a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to get in that club. So yeah. then when somebody talks shit, you're just like, oh, you son of a bitch. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know? But but anyway, this thing I was saying about interesting segue is dealing with people that just are trying to start shit, right? Mm -hmm. You deal with that a lot anytime you're in the public eye. Sure. Um, it, it's an interesting thing, and I know I've talked about it in the other podcast with Taylor, so I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are yeah. on how do you deal with haters? How yeah. what, do you, you know, when you get negative comments, I'm, cause <clears throat> I'm going to be completely honest with you. The haters for me have done nothing but fuel me. Sure. <laughs> right. I get hurt by it. Sure. I uh, get enraged, angered by it. Sure. It bothers me. So if you're a hater and you're trying to bother me, yes, there does come a point And I kind of think I'm at that point now, Jeremy, up uh -huh. until now, it was immediately go at it head on. And even in this last situation where, like, dude, we're running a big company now. This isn't like, you know, Brian's garage anymore and all this stuff. We have right, you know, 30 right, employees right. and, you know, uh, 25 employees, sorry. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're doing a lot of business. Like, I need to start insulating myself a little bit from, you know, the general hater out there. But, like, my – even in this last situation, I let it build and build and build. This was the first time I didn't reply. And you know what? I got a few phone calls here and there like, hey, Brian, I'm proud of you. And I'm like, oh, man, was I this big of a, 
of a problem. Like, you know what I mean? You have to tell me you're proud of me. Like, but I got a couple of those and I was like, Be like, you're man. so big, so yeah. big. Good job. Yeah. Thanks for not like, you know, making an entire video about uh, anyway. So, 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 but it went on for too long and I got too many of those. And then one of my people that's like close to me was like, you know what? I appreciated that you weren't responding at first, but now some of this stuff is starting to is are you not responding because it's true? And that's when I was like, oh, hell no. Time to put these haters in their place. I am king of the battle when it comes to, to that kind of stuff. <laughs> I am king with artwork, with as quick as we got that logo out to you, you know, like, oh, yeah, like yeah. and so, so I knew what these people's next move was because they were a part of my community at one point, and I was able to just easily flip the script, which I should have done at first. And you know what else I should have done? I'll have to say this. I was trying to be the bigger person and not talk about any personal drama Right. And that also came back to backfire on me. Why? Because you think I'm friends with, let's say, a guy named Jerry, right? Uh huh. Me and Jerry turns out have a lot of problems. He owes me money or wobble, you know, whatever the, the, the thing is, right? I don't tell you. Now Jerry takes you, you know, somewhere or tries to. And, and, and to, then, yeah, and then by the end of it, it's like you've only heard his side at the bar or, you know, like wherever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you guys are now friendlier than ever for some reason. And so and so you get this whole thing to where by the time you finally figured out that he and I had an issue, you're like, hey, man, you should have just told me. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I'm all over the place. I guess none of the hate comments I get are comments that are going to necessarily hurt my business in any sure. way. It's just people talking shit. And if that's the case, it's like, okay. In, in regards to, you that, know what I mean? In regards to that. And the reason why I feel like not replying is the way to go is because the, the business is past that where 10 people online make a dent. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, and I could look at that and be like overly, you know, confident uh, and stop replying to every person that emails me. Right. Or I can look at that and go, no, this is a part of our DNA, which it is. And I'm right. going to continue keeping a relationship with my community where I do right. reply to a lot of the stuff. And so at some point, even that will become less and less and less. Unfortunately, it's just part of the growth process of a, right. of a company, even a communal company. And right. I'll try to give them back more. So in other ways, like serving them with the best stuff and blah, blah, blah. But in the end, um, this time I just ignored it. And no, I can't say that I'm happier for ignoring it. In fact, what would have happened if I had just done my old MO, um, everyone would look at me like, why'd you do that? That was, that was messed up, but it is what it is. And they'd laugh about it and move on. And instead right. this time it, it became some long drawn out like, are these things? No, of course they're not true. You're listening to an idiot, you know. Come on, man. <laughs> well, what are you talking and about? I guess I guess that's the fine line, right? And that does honestly tend to be the ones that I do respond to more, mm -hmm. right? Like if somebody just says, like I get this all the time, like, okay, for instance, if I talk about, uh, like skincare, mm -hmm. right? Like if I do an ad spot for Tiege, there's a small segment of guys that lose their fucking mind. Like they don't think men can be well-groomed for whatever reason. <laughs> they think if a man takes care of himself, right. <laughs> you know, like the one guy was like, Oh, does your T Shanley come with a pack of tampons? <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's that whole, like overly machismo. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. it's just like, Oh my God. Are Meanwhile, we not past I think the... you're about as manly as a guy needs to be like, I, it's okay. I, if you put lotion on your face, right? It's like, I, I used to have dry, red, nasty, like flaky skin spots. I started using it. They stopped. Like, does that make me a girl? Cause that I don't want like my face to, <laughs> yeah, the, the, <laughs> oh, I'm a like pussy. Cause I don't like to look like a leper. Keep it you know to yourself. Saying? Keep it Keep to yourself. It, yeah. Girly man. Yeah. But, but anyway, Comments like that, while I think it's kind of my job, my whole channel is based around kind of, I would call it like a men's lifestyle channel, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, it's all the hobbies that guys are into and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like it's partly my job to kind of 
try to educate guys that the modern guy, it's okay to like take care of yourself. It's okay to, you know, uh, do a little grooming, do a little manscaping downstairs to keep things keep tidy. You know yourself. what I mean? It's okay to do that stuff. But those, so a part of me says to respond to those comments because I don't want more guys to think that that is the attitude guys should have because I strongly disagree with mm. that attitude. But the other part of me is like, yeah, but like if I look at the breakdown of the comments, literally 98.5% of the comments are super positive and there's a half a percent or I a percent. pay attention to that. So, right. If it's so, just so, a so comment from someone you don't know and then it, forget it. That's the thing, right? So it's like at that point, do you just ignore it? And usually I just ignore comments, negative comments. I ignore them. If it's like slanderous or like they're on there, like with hate speech talking about, Oh yeah, this or you that. And saying like Next, words that I won't say on a yeah, public yeah, forum, yeah. I'll block them. I just block them not and move e on. Not even worth talking about. Next no. question. Uh-huh. Bitcoin. Up Don't even get me started with that. What shit. do you think? Okay. Listen, I, I know you're not someone that's big into crypto, but I'm just asking like, do you see it going back to where it was? Do you think this is like a crazy dip? Like, what, what are you just? just I think the whole reaction. world's gonna fucking crumble, and we're gonna go back to trading oh pigeons and fucking chickens. You're collecting silver. I'm silver. I'm old school, son. When it all fucking crumbles, I don't mean to sound like a crazy oh, conspiracy boy. theorist. Yeah, it does sound. <laughs> but I don't <laughs> trust any of that shit. Okay, I just don't. I don't. Though I've seen the markets go up and down. I've uh -huh. seen it's. It's just like you put all your money into this, and it's it's all fake. It's all fake. It's out there in the fucking ethos. And then if something goes down and the market crashes, all your fucking money's gone. And I'm like, no, Listen, dude, I, I I don't trust that shit. A bank account is only insured for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Which is why I never put more than that in one account. Smart. Most people, well, not most people, but people with more money than that do. Because what are you going to have, 15 accounts? Let's say you're a multimillionaire, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't have that kind of money. But, like, I do have several bank accounts. Yeah. And it's split up. So that way, if something were to go fucking crazy sure, with one, still have your reserve. I still have, I, you know, I'm a big fan of redundancies in everything in life. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just being prepared i don't i'm not look i don't have a container buried in my backyard with uh, a year's worth of food stores or anything but i but i but i think general preparedness and redundancies in life just to kind of safeguard yourself is is not a bad thing you know what i mean so that brings me to another thing that's been on my mind here elon musk lost 200 billion dollars supposedly of value He's yeah, first, you were telling me about yeah, this. He's I don't the first understand. Person to ever lose this much money? Like, explain to me how this happened. I, in in I rough terms, I, I know could, you. Okay, I wish I could actually, and I probably should have done more research. But I'm just shooting, you know, just bringing shooting it up. from the hip. Yeah, headlines. Um, the the purchase and then taking private of Twitter, I'm imagining, had something to do with it. Um, Tesla, so how much was he worth? Tesla supposedly had a bad year. Me as a consumer, I'm seeing a lot more options in the electric vehicle market. I mean, there's a how lot could Tesla have had a bad year? I see more Teslas on the road now than I ever have in my life. I was in school to dropping the kids off today, and the car in front of me opened up like the fucking DeLorean. Yeah, it was that. a Tesla. You know what I'm That's saying? Neat. So I mean, and I never. It's more and more. I see more and more. Which, yeah. by the way, I am kind of. I'm I'm, like here with electric cars. Man, my my. Um, you know, Ophelia drives the Tesla, and uh, I drive it quite often. And it I've is just been seeing a lot of these things saying that, and I don't know. You never know because the stuff what? you see on the the stuff you see online, you never Love know, right? This. Without without digging deeper, yeah, yeah. you never know. But I'm hearing people say stuff like, "Well, electric cars, a the uh, lithium that it takes to make the batteries. There's not enough lithium on the planet to make uh -huh. enough batteries to, to replace all the gas cars we currently have. Yeah. So what are we going to do about that? I hear, well, when these batteries start going bad, the batteries are like one of the most toxic things ever. Like it's almost sure. impossible to dispose of them. So we're going to have this crisis once these cars start needing new batteries. If all these lithium batteries, what are we going to do with all of them? Then you got stuff like California mandating electric cars, and then they have fucking power grid shortages and black rollouts and people can't charge their electric cars and it's like mm. man i don't know bro is the electric cars really the answer maybe I, we're I, fucking shooting I, ourselves I in the know. foot here i don't know but what i can tell you is 
is as a driving vehicle, as a machine. Oh, it's a great experience. It is the most, it is the closest thing to a rocket ship ever on four wheels. It, oh, uh, 100%. I don't I'm not... even think it should be legal, to be honest with you. The, the, <laughs> and no one under 35 should ever get behind the wheel of one of these things because we're it's talking so fast. about, yeah, it's. Oh, by the way, I'm going to be doing this the whole, because I know there's a lot of cigar oh, lovers, no. <laughs> and I'm going to be doing this the whole yeah, podcast just to. Just to enrage people and make their heads explode. Yeah. Zippo all day. And I've even gone over to the traditional Zippo oh, just to really no, fuck dude, with people. Can't, uh, I can't taste good after that. It doesn't. Dude, you don't notice. That's what that's what always cracks me up. We've had this conversation. These fucking people, they, they, they get all on their horse about the soapbox. And I'm like, I've forgotten more cigars than these people have smoked. Sure. Okay. And I mean, right after you do it, can you taste it for a half a puff? Maybe. But then it, then you don't like oh, anybody who says different's full of shit. What's wrong with like, the torch? Just get a torch. That's all I have. Is they torches. run, they run out so fucking fast, dude. I was going through pro butane. Like it's my job, dude. I'm, yeah. I do like them for touching up. I will say I like for them sure. for touching up. Something it's else. way better for touching up, but I was just going through just bottles and bottles of that shit. So and the I'm reason like, why I was thinking about the Elon Musk thing is because there's this reporter that like thinks they broke this big case and i read this article and it's called like something like a document h or something or text h or and they basically got some of elon's text messages okay and their big gripe is like from what i read was how rich people ultra rich not your next door neighbor that has a lot of money like the billionaires, like, yeah, the big, big, like ten. the the Saudi, the Saudi princes and shit that have yes. more money than like they're wiping their ass with hundred dollars. How, how they talk about money and and I I just thought that it was the most ridiculous thing ever because I'm like of course they, it's a game you don't get to that point, you don't even get to my point without looking at money as a bit of a game at some you know on some level. Well, so here's to talk about billions of dollars which you know uh, affect millions of people's lives like it's nothing makes sense it made perfect sense to me i didn't get what they were complaining about hey man I, i've always said it's like this life isn't fair okay anybody who says we're all on an equal playing field is full of shit and that's why when you hear all these things everybody's equal no they're not no no they're not they're not everybody's not equal okay Sha shaquille o'neal probably has a hog like a baby's uh, arm holding yeah. an apple Okay. I actually, actually heard he doesn't, but okay. Well, but you know what I'm saying? He's yeah. a huge guy. Yeah. Like, not everybody's created the same, bro. Sure. Like, it, some people are going to have. I actually did a video recently and I, I talked about this a little bit. Some people have benefits that you don't have, that you may never have. And that's just how it is. Like, not to say you shouldn't strive for it, but you shouldn't bitch about it. Like, I would, I would personally would love to see an economy where. I think that, that there are some rules out there. Like we know, like, hey, when you're born and you live here and you have this situation, there are some, the same way that there are, there are a, a recipes for success, there are also recipes for failure. Sure. And I think that we can work on that as a society where Absolutely. possible. You know? Sure. But yeah, life's not fair. Life is, I we, tell it we to should, my daughter, my daughter's five years old, I tell her every day, hey, by the way. I tell my kids all the time. It's not fair. It's not fair is like, well, if you say that in my house, you will get in trouble. Like you, you, there will be like, something's getting taken away for the rest of the day or you're going to bed early or something because like, <laughs> I hate, lesson. I hate when I hear people say that stuff. It's like, it's like whoever fucking told you it was supposed to be fair. Right. Like it's, it's, it's not. I feel the same way about happiness. Who said that we're, I had this delusional idea, I think all the way up into my mid thirties where it's like, I'm supposed to be happy. Why? For what reason? Right. <laughs> hey. Happiness is an emotion. I actually heard DMX explain this like pretty, pretty well, like, you know, without having a psychology degree. He's like, you're not supposed to be happy all the time. You're going to be happy. You're going to be mad. You're going to be sad. He was like, yeah. life, life would be boring if you were happy all the time. I, 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 it sounds a little cliche, but like if you were just happy all the time, you wouldn't appreciate it. Sure. 
right? It takes having shitty hard times and sadness and stuff to appreciate the happy good times, right? 100%. So, and that's kind of my point. And I, look, and I don't mean to come off like this asshole that doesn't think people that aren't as fortunate shouldn't be given every opportunity and we shouldn't try to help our fellow man up the most we can because I, I absolutely feel like we should. But at the same time, there are a lot of people that have been dealt a raw hand and have pulled their self out of it because they didn't give a shit about life not being fair. They were getting after it and trying to fix the problem rather than bitch about the problem. And I don't know where I heard it, but it's like, if you're not part of the, pro if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. So get the fuck out of the way for the people that are trying to fix it. Sure. You know what I mean? Like quit your bitching. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then people say, Oh, that's easy for you to say, you know, you have a nice house and you live in a good place and all this stuff. And I'm like, yeah. And maybe that's not fair. There are some people that definitely were born into less fortunate I like circumstances. I worked, I, I, you can't guilt me. Like I, I know, like rich people, like ultra rich people, they talk about guilt a lot. And I and I've I've had a little bit of. There's been times where I'm like, maybe I should do more, give more, you know. But my my whatever. That's like my personal thing. But like, I, but there are like ultra wealthy people that live with a lot of guilt. And, it's, and that's it's, crazy because most of those ultra wealthy people are the ones that give the most to charities. And I'm not saying it's always for like a super noble cause. A lot yeah, of times yeah, you're yeah. just doing it for tax purposes. <laughs> yeah. But but nevertheless, they're still giving more to charities than people that that Don't aren't have, ultra wealthy. Yeah. You know what I mean? If it wasn't for those ultra wealthy people, a lot of these charities would go broke. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know, man. I just, like I said, I don't mean to sound like a hard ass. I don't feel super guilty. Yes, I was born into a, a more fortunate circumstance than a lot of people, but I've also worked my ass off to get to where I've been and done my own thing. That's one thing. And, I, I, and there are a lot of people that were born into far more fortunate circumstances yeah. than me, and I don't resent to them for that. And, and so. far worse. And, that's, and far worse. That's right. one thing where I will say like that I'm almost uh, – that I'm very okay with, I should say. I'm very okay with the fact that I had a pretty traumatic – you know, uh, situation growing up, right? Uh -huh. um, because it makes me not feel bad or feel guilty about any success that I get because I worked, you know, I earned it. Well, and, and that's the thing is anybody uh, that's an entrepreneur that wasn't, you know, a, a Trump or a, a Vanderbilt or, you know, one of these like well-known, like rich families that all their kids are just handed millions and millions of yeah. dollars. Anybody who's made it out there on their own, and started companies or businesses or whatever, I mean, you kind of did that yourself. So, I mean, you should not feel guilty about that. You worked sure. for that. It wasn't handed to you. You had to work for it. How much of, of a person's income should they give to um, charity? I don't think – I think zero should be mandatory. Okay. Well, like, but, what's the rule in your world? Like, what do you think? It depends on where you're at. All right, let me With ask. It, let me ask. The it question depends on where you're at, right? If Correct. you're if you're if you're near the poverty level, then obviously nothing. You're scraping by. Let's say you have ten million dollars a year. You get four percent interest on it. That gives you four hundred thousand dollars a year before tax. After taxes, you're at three hundred k a year. How much of that do you give away? Comes to you without really working. Oh, you, comes you to work, you, without you. Yeah, it's it's your interest from. All the wealth you've built. You're 60 oh, years old gotcha, now. Oh, gotcha, you know, gotcha, 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 gotcha. That's tough to say, man. I mean, it's kind of dependent on what you do, right? Like, if you've got, a, if you're a person that a lot of your stuff and you're invested heavily in charitable organizations where you're not necessarily giving money, but you're a lot of your time is invested in this or whatever, then maybe it's more or less. It's hard to put a a number on it. I think it's very individual for each person. But I mean, I think everybody should leave this world in a better place than they or, or try to uh, right. yeah, you know i often think about that and and i often think about and and this is where i can become really pessimistic i don't follow these thoughts i follow my more hopeful um uh, better world kind of thoughts but i often think about who the hell are you to think that you're gonna change humanity it's almost pure ego you're going to make this world a better place with your measly whatever you can make. I don't care if you're Elon Musk. It's still measly when it comes to the terms of the in terms of the world's problems. Like you're going to say like to me, those a single people, person, a single person. It, even I if don't. you amass an army, you're building. It's to me that that's where I like like I can get like pessimistic with my thing. I'm like, who who are we? Who am I to think that I'm going to change someone's life? By the way, 
if you went up to most poor families and started giving them money, you'd re probably regret the day you ever did that. When the one of the first things I got involved with a charity, and one of the first things they told me was, you can't give out your personal information to any of these people. It will right. not work out well. And so I was like, oh, it made me realize, like, okay, you have to have separations. And so two things. One, religion says I've heard 20%. Some religions say 10% of your income, which, again, is archaic. I think at this point it depends on what you make. But the other thing was, and I forgot what the hell I was going to say. Um, <laughs> I hate when that happens. Um, the other thing was the most high level of – charity that you can do according to a lot of religions is anonymous sure and i i yeah i mean i think that that's the way it should be done really because if you're doing it for like thanks and for praise for doing it then you're doing it for the wrong reasons right mm -hmm. and plus i think having a, a certain amount of distance between you and it is is a better situation because sure. unfortunately unfortunately facts some Look, a lot of the people, facts, facts a lot, Hashtag a lot. Facts. I, I would argue most people with unfortunate circumstances are good people and they're just down on their luck and maybe they didn't make good choices and whatever. But there's a, at Where least a decent... Where going with this? There's at least a decent percentage of those people that are scumbags. <laughs> and, and they will try to take advantage. And, oh my and, gosh. The things I, mean, I you, did when I was broke... Oh my that's, gosh. But that's what I'm saying, right? So, Sometimes this is, desperate this... people do desperate things. So that's why I said I think giving to them to try to help them is good, but having a little separation isn't necessarily a bad thing. The right? more success you get, the more you're going to realize why people do certain things that they do. Okay? Right. And, and that's even... not to say that there's not rich people that are shitheads too. I'm not saying that's a, a strictly – I've met a few oh, rich people that still stay, like, quote, unquote, in the hood. Oh, dude, well, I've just met rich people that do some of the scummiest shit ever. They're far sure. worse than the, the worst people in the hood or in the uh, gangs uh, or whatever. They're just uh, uh, fucking scumbags. <laughs> agreed. But I've I've seen um I've seen wealthy families that still when I say in the hood, I mean they still try to live like normal people. Sure. You know, they have very down to earth. Well, what was uh, that methods. guy that was famously like super, super rich and still lived in like the house that he bought? That's um, Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett, yeah. right? He lived in like a 2,000 square foot house yeah. that's worth like $150,000. The guy guys doesn't care. He's obsessed with making money and that's all, you know, like in a good way, I guess. And all he does is read and, and make money. The guy's brilliant. But his thing is, what do I need it for? He's given away billions of dollars yeah. to charities. And that's fantastic. It is. It's a, it's amazing. I think I'm just trying to set like a, 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 a is there a is there is there a baseline of like how much <laughs> should should you give one percent? How about what what if we all committed one percent? Is is that okay? Is it, is it a low enough percentage for you to say yes? Everyone should. Uh, I, I man, I, I don't think that there is a number that you can put on that everyone should commit mm -hmm. because. It's so variable to how much money you make, how things are going. Are you reinvesting in other businesses trying to increase your wealth? Do you have a bunch of kids you're putting through college? You know, I mean, there's the, do you have previous debts that maybe you're making really good money now, but you've got yourself in a hole for years and years getting there and you're paying a lot of shit off to try to. Right. It's th there's so many variables that it's hard to say, like, yes, everybody should commit this. Everybody, I think, should do something, even if it's not money. Yeah. Do something to try to make the world a better place. If you're not in a position to do monetarily something, then maybe volunteer a little time or something to that fashion. Do something to leave the world a better place than when you came. Sure. I don't know. Sure. How's that saying go? Uh, I, I fucked it all up, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, of course. I think if you're fortunate, you should do something to help the, people. You don't have the luxury of thinking like that if you're born in the wrong place with the wrong income and the wrong parents and the wrong everything. And, sure. Yeah. And that's why I'm saying that it's not fair to say across the board because no, not everybody's going to be in that position. Sure. No, for sure. It is if it, if it doesn't make you uh, uh, do things that might be otherwise out of character had you been given the right opportunity. Um, it certainly nudges you in that direction. You know, growing right. up fatherless is proven 
to have yes. a higher a dropout rate, higher gang joining rate, higher, you know. So, like, sure. th there are those things. So I feel like as a society, sure, I think um, some of that should go to, like, prevention. But that brings me to, like, this, like they don't teach us taxes in school. They don't teach us uh, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship. No, man, but, but they harp and harp and harp on some of the dumbest shit yeah. I've ever seen in my entire life on school. You know, they stopped teaching kids cursive. Yes. Yes. The, the curriculum. Here, here, go, here, here, here goes my, 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 here goes my, uh, <laughs> My tinfoil hat, bro. Here, you want to come? My, mm -hmm. my, got a container buried in my backyard. And this is partly joking. Okay. But maybe a tad bit of seriousness. Mostly joking, though, obviously, because there are printed versions. But I'm always joking around, and I'm like, you know why they stopped teaching kids cursive? Because what? the fucking Constitution's written in cursive. Oh. And they, and they, but obviously there's printed translations and stuff, so it's a joke. But you should like, just run with these things, though. You uh, like fully commit, and then yeah, yeah. people would think I'm crazy. Be like, you know what it is? It's the Bruh. fucking government. Let me tell you something, trying. brother. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I won't. But I do wouldn't we need lie cursive? if I didn't. I wouldn't lie if I didn't at least think that for a second. I was like, wait a minute, the Constitution. I'm like, oh, you dumbass. There's printed versions like Jesus Bro. Christ conspiracy theory. Take your fucking yes, tinfoil hat there, off. There is, there are. Um, yeah, the only thing they taught my kids in school was how to sign their name because you have to be able to, yeah. you know, for, for signing legal my documents kid loves and stuff. Cursive. She's been talking about it a lot lately. But, but, but they, they didn't teach them how to write. Like, yeah, but even like my kid cursive. goes to one of the best schools you could possibly send a child to. Like this school is unbelievable. And I don't even think they teach you I, I, taxes, how to do your, you should know how to do your taxes. You're supposed to do them every year as an individual person. Why don't you learn how to do your taxes? They're easy. Like if you. Well, here's something else that is a basic life skill that they don't teach anymore, at least in our district. And I was like, when I was a kid, I thought it was pretty stupid, but getting older i'm like man that's kind of like some i was actually telling my oldest son about this the other day they don't do home ec anymore did you take home ec in school where you had uh, to like where you had to learn to like I sew got, and cook i got sent to this um to this uh technical school and i think it was in uh 10 my i think it was in 10th grade and yeah uh, and but that was different that was like to teach you plumbing well but here's i walked the thing, in like, and i i was like there was like a whole room full of girls and i was like Hey, what's that class over there? <laughs> they were like, that's like hairdressing. I was like, I'll take that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, hairdressing might be a little much because that's yeah. not a life skill. But like right. general, like being able to sew a button on, uh, you know, being able to cook yourself food, you can't do being anything. able to, to do general, like plunge a toilet, unclog a drain, like uh, general life skills, I think would be a good thing that they should teach kids For and sure. maybe not harp on, you know, algebra 15 like you know what you i'm were saying looking for a, you ran through all the all, all the, the stupid titles classes, of classes yeah. and you're like no, i, I like, can't say that one i can't say this one. i can't <laughs> yeah, exactly. okay i can say that one because you can live without that right? you can yeah. live without that well because i was about to say some shit and i was like I algebra don't know geography actually. yeah you need geography i heard <laughs> you geography need ge coming up <laughs> <laughs> i was like yeah you probably should know geography <laughs> yeah you should know geography yeah. but but for sure like high level math like if you're gonna do that Bro, in your life Life. on i don't really i didn't really need it yeah like what what they say Nor about did algebra, i learn it <laughs> what they say oh, about man. right what they say about algebra and somebody told me this once uh -huh. and it made sense was it's not actual algebra that they're teaching you sure it's it's algebra makes you think in a very logical and a yeah. certain kind of problem solving way and it's to help your brain learn certain thought processes it's yeah. not really to necessary for you to know algebra because obviously i've never really used algebra 2 in my life as an adult ever, yeah. but it, it, it does teach you a, a, a way of thinking. It helps your brain develop the way it thinks, which I get that. No, but, 100%. Excellent. But I also you think have to that, like, that stuff for inventory and how, when you sell something, how much it's going to, yeah, for sure. Sure. It, you use it, but nonetheless, but you can get by with multiplication and, and addition and subtraction. Right. But there are certain life skills that they spend zero time teaching anybody in school. And I think it would, it would behoove our youths uh, much more to learn you can, some of that you can stuff. You pretty much just weed out everyone with a, with a not above average IQ by just looking at who's in physics. 
right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just thought of that. I'm like, you could pretty much get all the smartest kids in school just by figuring out who's taking physics classes. Because if Real you quick. get to that level, and, and that's the point. Why are you learning that one? You should, but we do need good engineers, according to a lot of people. Yeah. This is a side note, and it's. I know we're not going to spend a lot of time on this in the podcast because we both spend a lot of time in this in our other avenues, but I do want to ask this question. Uh -huh. How far do you smoke down cigars when you smoke? It depends if I love them or not. Remember, I have three million cigars or so. It's true. You, so, it's true. You know, but I definitely go into the third third. Nubbing, last night I nubbed. I was in love with it, but you know, I don't typically nub unless it's fantastic. That's when all the alarms go off and I got to put that cigar out. See, I nub... Not all the time, but most of uh -huh. the time, because the, that last third is one of my favorite thirds of a cigar, usually. I get, the, in the last third, I, it, sometimes it makes me not gag a little bit, but it makes me like, I don't know. I, it it can, not, it can. It doesn't and I, go, definitely, I don't get the amount of smoke I'm looking for. And like you're puffing on it too hard, it gets acrid and yeah, weird. Yeah, and, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. no, I get it. That definitely happens at times, and those I put did out for sure. Did you smoke on New Year's Eve? Did you smoke a cigar? I mean, I smoke every day. But did you do you like? Did you smoke something special? Did you reserve something special? What'd Man, you my New Year's Eve, my New Year's are super like lame, mm -hmm. <laughs> like super lame. Forty four year old guy with three kids, lame. Like, <laughs> like, 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 bro. Like, I was up here in my cigar room by myself watching YouTube and like mm. having a, and smoking a cigar. Did like, you even hang out with your wife. She was tired. She was tired. She worked that day, so she had worked twelve. She was tired. She had worked that day. She had worked 12 hours and she was like, I'm going to bed. I'm like, cool. My family was in town, but they were, uh, traveling back the next day. So we hung out early in the evening and like uh -huh. ate food and hung out and stuff like yeah. that. But then we all kind of like kicked it out early and, and we're so, in, you know, everybody was in bed. Uh, I think, I think, you know, we're both the same age, right? We're both 44. And yeah, I we're almost exactly the same age, same year, only a few Maravich. months apart. Um, anyway. <laughs> So uh, this year, I actually had a great New Year's. New Year's is my least. New Year's Eve and then New Year's Day are my two least favorite days of the year. They are my least. I, I can't stand them. I don't like them. I get anxious. I get nervous. I get uh, upset. I get frustrated, depressed, uh, weird. Okay. So I. Do you have any New Year's traditions with your family that like? Like with my, my wife family, make certain foods. Okay, that's what I'm saying. You have yeah. certain foods. Yeah. Okay, that, okay. That, that continue. Part, you're right. That that'll make you happier on that day is doing those things. Maybe but, we have a weird one. And actually, after you get done with your thought, I'm curious okay. to hear because if I tell you mine, you'll probably be like, "What the okay. fuck are you talking about?" So, so go ahead. So it's some hillbilly shit, probably. <laughs> we got we got invited to um, a, a, a new friend, a couple friends of our. My daughter goes to school with this really nice young man, and um, they invited us to their house. We met all their friends. They had a hibachi chef come. Two ah. hibachi chefs come. They have like an outdoor kind of dining area. Oh, it was awesome. Oh, that, it was incredible. That's super dope. And that's I had awesome. a great time. Number one. I did tremendous. Not. You could go truck. That was it was tremendous. <laughs> tremendous. It was tremendous. It was Number tremendous. One, <laughs> I did not drink. Well, for you, that's good because you tend to, 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 to you, you I, like to you like to tip I, the sauce. I did a little not bit. drink. I did not drink on purpose. I haven't been drinking feel? a lot. Period. But I, um, it felt awesome. I felt well. First of all, I had to drive home, so that was one thing. And we were close sure. by. But by the way, on the way home, I saw at least three people you could have pulled over and, and banged out with a DUI. Like they were oh, just easily. doing shit. I'm like, come on, man! It's the one night of the year you're supposed to stay off the road. And yeah. so, so um. <laughs> Uh, I felt great. I I did take an edible before I went. And, <laughs> well, and, then, I mean, then you really didn't need to drink. I, <laughs> it's, you didn't need the crucial combo, bitch. You were all right. Me, doesn't stop me other nights. I Dude, I don't fuck with edibles, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. Edibles are dangerous. Yeah, you, ever, you ever seen that Instagram guy, that, that, that guy, and he's like, why do you white people make your edible so strong? <laughs> he's like, now I've got to have somebody come and pick me up yes. because my t car's <laughs> yes. turned into a spaceship. I can't. He's uh, like, I'm tasting colors. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> I'm tasting colors. Yeah, I, I've felt like that before. Um, yeah, man. So I, I did that instead and I enjoyed it. It was different though, because everyone there was drunk and maybe, you know, other things. And do you find that being around drunk people when you're sober is annoying? 
No, I do find it makes me feel superior, though. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I do me, feel like yeah, I feel I, very like I, 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 yeah. right. <laughs> I feel very smart when I'm around. Oh, you people. drunk fucking right. plebs! <laughs> you, Jesus, you can't I don't even, know why I'm even hanging you, out with you, you fucking can't even resist dumb. your urges to have another one. You know what Pieces I mean? Like, of shit. Yeah, you undisciplined motherfucker. <laughs> and so, so I, I felt great. I had a great time. Everyone was super cool there. The food was good. Uh, hibachi worked in my favor because it was like mostly vegetables and protein. It was great. Um, and then, um, and then, uh, and then we went home at twelve fifteen. We had been out to dinner with them like a week prior, and they were like, "At twelve fifteen, we want everyone to get, get the fuck out of our house." And I was like, right. "Perfect." So, <laughs> so we left. We were the only ones that left, though. <laughs> they still had like a house full of people. So we left. We went home. My wife and I had a cigar out back. Perfect, perfect New Year's. Didn't have to it's go great. crazy. Yeah. It's great. Okay. I, I bring this up, and I oh, I do want to hear your tradition, but before I, I, I hear your tradition, yeah, 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 yeah. I just want to say it's nothing exciting. that people of this age of wisdom, whatever uh -huh. age of – whatever level of wisdom 44 takes you to, right? Uh-huh. No – that New Year's Eve, it's not just to call it Amateur Hour. It, it, and I don't even know that Amateur Hour is the, the right name for it. It's No, just, that's, it's absolutely it's a, the right name for it. To me, it's dangerous. I, I, that's how I feel about it. I feel like it's dangerous, okay? And just because there's like too many things that could, you know, too many scenarios that could come together and form a really bad one. But in the end, New Year's Eve did strike. Uh, did you see Dana White? Smack his wife in the middle of a nightclub. <laughs> oh, and, Jesus and, and, <laughs> okay. Christ. Now, she hit him first. She did hit him first. However, there is a video oh, of God. Dana White, who's uh, got to be a billionaire by now, in not a to nightclub. Mention a, not to mention a brick shithouse of a dude. In a nightclub, correct. In a night, and manhandling a woman. That's all it looks uh, like. That's all it looks like. Okay. Uh, woo, in a I hope nightclub, that there's some more to that. Like, because here, this is an interesting. That's the testosterone getting to their fucking brains. What, bro? Well, you're fifty something years old. You're a billionaire. Why are you in a nightclub? Well, th well, that's true. But th this is an interesting uh, question that my boys ask me sometimes, because I'll even get mad when they like try to get with their sister, and I'm like, look, you you Wait, don't hit what? girls. Who get? Oh, hit their sister. Okay. Like get like get rough I with her. Get like with what? Sister. Like, oh, oh God. Shit. What are you, sweet home Alabama? <laughs> no, dude. I mean, I'm from Kentucky, but that's all fucking. <laughs> that's that? all rumors, bro. That's not true. Um, no, but I've always taken the the role of you just you never hit a woman. Of course. Period. Full course. full stop. Right. But uh, it we does, can talk it, about that though. But it does. It does bring up the question mm -hmm. of is that necessarily accurate right if a girl's coming after you with a knife then is it is that at that point is then is it okay like my so my, my my uh what i've been brought up as and stuff no says it's no, not okay it's not okay. it's not okay it's because okay. Two of the wrong people around each other bring out the worst in each other. Sure. Okay? I had that situation with my ex-wife. It was and, fucking and, toxic, and, and bro. And it's not – yeah, it's, it's toxic. It's toxic. It's toxic. You got to get out of those situations. That's why we didn't stay married 11 months. It was yeah. toxic. Yeah. I and, knew and, things were going to go bad if I stayed yeah. in that situation. Yeah. It, 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 there you go. And when you get those signals – you know, you know that something's wrong and you do your best to exit the situation without anyone getting hurt or, or you know, what well, have you. But she would do shit like get in my face like oh, this yeah. close oh, no. and, be like, yeah, and be like, what are you going to do, yeah. pussy? Yes. And you know what I've I mean? When that. somebody gets in and <laughs> you're like, that. <laughs> I had a I had a girl when I was 16, broke up, I broke up with her and she got pissed and just started windmilling me, bro. Oh, smack, smack. She oh, ripped no. my shirt off. She scratched my face. Oh. I mean, dude, she just had and I was just trying to get away from her. So and it's then she okay. had the, it's OK for women to hit men, just not. Men well, then yet. and then she had the balls to go tell her dad. He comes over. Of course. And he's like and he's like, hey, I don't want you coming near my daughter anymore. And I'm like, bro. Do you see the like blood in the shirt? I'm like, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. He's like, well, you know, can't be laying hands on women. I'm like, bro, does she have a mark on her? He's like, well, no. I'm like, do you see me bleeding over right, here with right, the ripped right. shirt? Yeah. If I would have laid hands on her, she would be all fucked up. That is that <laughs> it is a double standard because even when you watch the video, you clearly see this woman hit him first. But he's a big dude, man. Smacking women, but, but and here's my thing I'm not even here to question him, her, the situation. I'm sure that it looks to me like they're gonna stay married, okay? And and it looks to me like it was 
And this is the point. It's New Year's Eve, dude. Well, <laughs> it it's, strikes it's, again. It's New Year's Eve. You mix alcohol, testosterone, cocaine. clubs, Most of cocaine. Most are on cocaine. On, uh, it's I'm a hell a of a drug. Believer. Coke sales go up. <laughs> Of, <laughs> it's like that clip from Eve. the Dave Chappelle show. Cocaine. It's a hell of a drug. <laughs> you know what I mean? Those sales go up on, on New Year's week. For sure, bro. But yeah, it's 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 a interesting conversation in, in modern uh I couldn't believe it. And he's got chivalry. to go on the news now and he's saying this is never acceptable and he's right. Uh, you know. I mean it's not. It's not. Now you will have feminists and people on the other side of that that are like that get pissed because they think being chivalrous is being sexist and being, uh, I think, uh what's, I, I what's think the word that they use all the time? It's not, uh, not machismo. It's, um, chauvinist, chauvinist. Sh chauvinist. Okay. chauvinistic to, to, you know, treat women differently than you would treat a man. And I'm like, eh, well, yeah, you can say that, but, uh, Logic is women I don't are just see this. Everyone's especially on YouTube. All these guys are talking about they're canceling. And I don't see it. Where, who, where where are oh, they I've, oh I've, I've for sure seen it okay. um I, I i'm not personally in my sure. life but sure. i've seen stuff on social media clips of women like losing oh, their minds oh, saying ridiculous shit to andrew tate bro do you know oh, anything yeah, dude, about what? this okay no, bro, i can what? i can fill you in i can fill you in and then so I is it give bullshit you... or is it not bullshit then i'll give you my opinion and okay you can say okay first before we right. go into this what is your opinion of andrew tate douche okay douche the thing sure. that kills me is he's got these other major inf i'm not talking about influencers i'm not talking about podcast i'm talking about joe rogan patrick bet david uh and a couple other big ones kissing is him you're great Here's they, the thing. they look at him and they, and i see because those dudes are older than us right they're like 50 52 ish and sure. they, i they look at him like they want to live like he's there. Like he understands the wisdom of being older, but he's not. And then, and he's taking well, advantage of the situation and he's <laughs> the man and he's not the man to me, to me, he is, I, that is not how I'd want my son to carry him. No, you want to hear my, my opinion of him is he comes across a bit douchey, Yeah. but not everything he says is completely without merit. No. Okay. A lot of what he's saying, I'm like, well, he's right, kind of a douche, on, and maybe on. he's not approaching this in the right angle. But some of the stuff he says is outlandish and crazy. But do you want but, your do you want your no, son no, 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 no. learning That's not from what I'm no? But but here's here's my thing. Do you want your even if there's a drug dealer that is extremely wise in life? Like, do you want your kid hanging out with that person? No, no. Okay, I'm not so, saying that I think he's like the best role model in the world. I'm saying I think he comes at it from. Uh, a, a little bit of a harsh angle that turns yeah. a lot of people's noses up. He knows and it what he's gets doing. Your... I will not. Yeah. I will not deny the fact that the man is very smart. Right. Very smart. But I think a lot of what he's saying isn't completely incorrect. He right? has said some brilliant things about entrepreneurialism right. in particular. Well, entrepreneurialism, uh, uh, the modern kind of way that men are looked at and, oh. and how being masculine is kind of looked at as a bad thing from a certain group of people these days, which I don't feel is true. I think uh -huh. there's nothing wrong with being masculine. I mean, you can overdo it, of course, and be like an overmasculine douchebag that walks around in a fucking wife beater <laughs> all the time. And you know what I mean? Like, but at the same time, I don't think being masculine in and of itself. So let is me a, tell you, no, it's not. It's not. But I mean, I shouldn't have to describe you as Matt. Listen, this that's a whole nother. That's a whole nother thing. I think men can just be men, and, and all that cancel stuff is all fake anyway. So who cares? Um, just be you, right? And so, and and so, but but here's the thing. A lot of these people that love this man that are very successful are treating this as its conspiracy theory. They, is it? I don't know they, enough. Okay, about so it to let speak me tell you. Let, I, I'm going to tell you. I, I, I dug I've up heard some both info. sides. Okay. I've heard this guy's a human trafficker, no, but, and I've heard it's all I, drummed up bullshit. But I dug up enough for me to take my street smart, street smart sense approach and form an opinion. I you do know not one have thing an I, opinion. You know, one thing I'll say before you get off on that mm -hmm. is today, with the way the world is and social media and technology and everything, it's getting harder and harder to tell what's f fact and oh what's fiction. Oh my gosh. 
it's you, so hard to wade through the bullshit and figure out it. the truth of the matter, man. It's so tough. Preach. And that's why I, I have a really hard time mm -hmm. taking a hard stance on mm -hmm. either side of, of any course. of this shit. Because as soon as I say, I think I've done my research and I say, okay, I'm, this is what it is. Mm -hmm. This guy is being, mm -hmm. uh, railroaded and this is bullshit. Then I, I'll find another site think, that has, I don't think, okay. So here's, here's the deal. So here's what okay. happened. So anyway, he, that was he, my, my two him, cents. Go him ahead. and his brother live in Romania. Okay? Okay. They're from they're UK citizens. They live in, in Romania. Okay? Oh, why did I think he was an American guy? He's not. Okay. Oh. Um, I think he might have spent some time here or, or something like that. Anyway, oh. so so they're, they're UK and Romania now, right? He was on uh, Big Brother for like five days. Okay? Okay. All right. Back in the day, like in 2015. He claims most of his money comes from, I believe he says gambling is a big source of money for him. I don't well, that's believe like that. That's like a Dan Blazarian guy. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah, yeah. where's all no, that? No, no, but he's he's from? not saying that he's a gambler. He's saying they own or part own casinos or some sort of method of gambling that pays them money. Okay. Uh, okay. He also admits that uh, OnlyFans, managing girls that do OnlyFans, is how he makes a living. Okay. Okay. So I mean, not so, a little, a little on the sleazy side, but I mean, okay. everybody, okay. everybody's got to, everybody's got to do, do what they so, got to do. This I guess. Is, and this is why, if there weren't people out there watching, they wouldn't have a business. So I there mean, you go, there you go. So, so that's that, right? That's who this dude is. He's also an ex kickboxer, and he's done a brilliant job of being so anti woke culture that they can't stop talking about him they can't stop right. bringing him on the piers morgan show the this show the that show i mean this guy's been everywhere he is a genius anti-marketer like the, uh, incredible one of the best to ever do it i'm a big fan of the anti-woke bullshit also Great. i i will say but there you have so so are a lot of people and even the people that absolutely hate it can't take their eyes off of it so right. that's what's going on there he's capitalized on that majorly now here's my thing when you read the articles where they're supposedly telling you the facts, this is the second time in Romania he's gotten reported for sex trafficking. The first time they took a look around, they said no one's being held here uh, against their consent. That's it. In the UK in 2015, when him and his brother lived there, they were also doing webcam before OnlyFans. This has been seems to be their source of making money. And I'll tell you what I don't like about it. After I tell you that it seems as though they're like just webcam guys like it. Uh, sometimes it sounds like there is sex involved uh, uh -huh. and sometimes it doesn't. So there's porn pornography webcam. This is how they've made a living. What I don't like about it is it's very, very, very clear. And I believe from what I read, he's even admitted this oftentimes and given it as advice. The women that he works with are not just people that want to make money off webcam. They are women that he meets. He tries to do whatever he can to get them to fall in love with him only after they have sex though. So the, the, the MO is he takes you on a few dates, however long it takes you to have sex with him. Then he starts getting this boyfriend. They call it the lover boy, right? They start getting huh. this attachment. And then he introduces you to how the two of you are going to make millions of dollars and run off in the sunset, and that's through webcam. You wouldn't believe the money we're making. This is incredible. My friend's brother's wife does it, and she and so they bring you in. At at which point, at which point, it is. I mean, that certainly sounds sleazy. Okay, it's sleazy. There's no doubt. Is it illegal? But, no. But it's I but illegal. I haven't heard any, I haven't heard anything illegal. There's uh, nothing immoral. illegal. There's oh, nothing moral, illegal. Sleazy, moral, maybe. Sure, for sure. Yeah, for sure. But, Again, okay. I wouldn't want my son, and I sure. wouldn't make a living right. like that. I right. just wouldn't do that. I mean, I have okay. a daughter, so immediately my hairs yeah. prick up with anybody taking advantage like that. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah, you're yeah. a fucking piece of shit. But sure. so far, nothing that um, somebody hugging their daughter and, a little more And by more the way, I fix. said something earlier. I was like, when, uh, you know, when I was poor when i was broke i you know did things for money i would never want to do and that doesn't mean like you know terrible things it just i mean the occasional blowjob but it's okay no. <laughs> giving or giving or receiving and how much no. uh you know, I, yeah, it doesn't mean like i've like hurt people or anything but you know i definitely work jobs i didn't want to and you're subject oh, we all have done that you're subject to do things that you wouldn't normally want to do with sure. anyway so back to this this is what i gather after reading all the information that's available 
In 2015, he was accused of rape twice, or uh, once once rape and once abuse, right? Um, okay. The charges were dropped after four years. The investigation really didn't go anywhere. I listened to the women tell their side of the story. Basically, this dude, from what I gather, this dude really idolizes pimp lifestyle. He is not afraid to smack a hoe. Uh, uh, that's okay. All, that's, uh, this is uh, all not good stuff. <laughs> really, really, really gets off on choking. Uh, the choking theme seems to come up more than well, not. Okay. Eh. Hey, listen. Well, now that, now, now that, look, now if you're choking a chick against her will, but I know there is a particular, and of I course. don't have this. I don't know why anybody would, I need more air, if anything else, when I'm having sex. I get out of breath. Why would I want to be choked? But, but, um, I, but nevertheless, I mean, there, there, there is a kink out there that some people just like that. And if that's your thing, I mean, whatever, you know, I mean, some people like feet, some people like that, yeah, but whatever. If it's, okay. So my thing is, if but it's if it's your, against the woman's will and you're up there choking his shit out of her, then that's wrong. I don't <laughs> you know think what I'm we, saying. So, so if she's into it. So here's where, here's where I draw my, and you know, any, uh, so-called, you know, uh, uh, blog, uh, vlog or whatever the fuck podcaster, you know, that wants to, uh, get why I would feel this way, bro. You don't move. Like, oh, just kill. You don't move to corrupt countries to conduct pornography if you're not a fucking <laughs> sleazeball in the first place. If you're legit, you can do it in the UK. You can do it in the US. You can do it True. anywhere. They move there for a reason, and it's not right. just a financial reason. Somebody's cousin knew purposes. somebody that like, yo, ten grand a month, and you get to do whatever the fuck you want. And so they, they found him with these four girls living, it sounds like living in, in a house the first time. They never investigated it further. This time, it doesn't seem as though they, that they've charged him, yet they've taken all of his assets that they can find. <sighs> well, it's like this. Uh, this is what I'll say about it. People are saying it's a setup. This is what I'll say about it. Okay. In today's world i have learned they can make people out to be evil when they're not mm -hmm. and they can make people that are evil be out to be good when they're not based on uh, cherry picking facts and stuff and making sure. things look better where so i don't have enough information mm -hmm. to make a judgment call on what i think other than there's definitely based on what you've told me now, whether or not all those stories are true or they're trumped yeah, up yeah. or who knows. We don't but know. Based, but based on what you've told me, it definitely doesn't sound good. No, <laughs> it, de for sure. it definitely doesn't sound like he's a stand up like dude no. that you would. I don't but, think he even claims to be, though. That's the thing. Like, he doesn't right. claim to be a. But whether or not he's done anything illegal. I mean, I just don't know enough, man. I mean, if he's truly forcing women into doing stuff like that, then he's a piece of shit and should be buried under. You know, a so prison people somewhere. talk about toxic masculinity all the time, and it's such a shit term. No one likes it. As in, no man likes it. No one likes this idea and all this stuff. And it gets pushed a little too heavy at times, for sure. But here's the thing, man. Like, I don't see why. I, I, I just don't. I don't understand why some of these major, major outlets would. I understand innocent until proven guilty. However, mm -hmm. and by the way, what does guilty mean in Romania? I don't give a shit. I, I, I can't go on the merit of Romania. This is a, probably a corrupt place, I'm guessing. Right? I don't know Romania <laughs> there's, that there's well. There's a whole I bunch of Romanians know. right now. They're like, fuck you. I did, yeah. I did know a Romanian do a consulate's daughter, and she made it sound – fairly up and up but it's bro it comes the only from, romanians i knew were pretty stand-up bang-up people but that no, doesn't I'm mean they're saying, that I'm doesn't mean they're government correct is. correct i'm yeah. just saying does uh, government in most countries are completely corrupt including here by the way but it's a different kind of corruption right you know it's harder mm -hmm. to get to you can't just walk up with a bag full of money and, and start paying off police chiefs and shit. or maybe you can who knows but <laughs> my thing is is i think in general how, politics how, and government are just corrupt by nature why would you plug why would you plug though like if i'm joe rogan why would you plug a dude that's even I think, this questionable i think joe rogan said it best though is like the reason that politics and government are corrupt is because the type of people that aspire to of be course. in those positions are generally power hungry people that are it it's a certain type of person that wants to be 
that at that level. Of course. You know what I mean? Your normal guy isn't interested in no, getting you can't, involved. You can't get past a certain point in politics without selling your soul, so to speak. Right. Yeah. So I, I, I do think he said that well. And I was like, but yeah, you're right. why would you, you right. put a guy, regardless if you like his <sighs> lifestyle, why would you put a guy on a show if there's all I, these questions? And at the end of the day, Jeremy, I'm a street smart guy. I will say. You don't move Joe's, countries. You don't move countries say, for nothing. I will say in Joe's defense, and that's one of the good things about this podcast, is I think me and you are very similar, but we yeah. also have some pretty opposed 100%. views on things. I will say that Joe normally is out there to give everybody a voice on both sides. I've seen him put extreme left people, extreme right people. I've seen him put every kind of person under the sun, and he may just be trying to give him a platform to try to get to the truth. That may be his, I don't know. I haven't seen Joe Rogan's thing on him. So I, I don't know. And I, I, I honestly stay as far away. And even though I do social media, mm -hmm. I'm using quotation fingers yeah, for yeah. people that are listening, uh, for a living. I generally, other than watching YouTube videos, stay pretty far out of all that shit. Yeah, I don't yeah. like to watch the news. I don't like to I watch, watch all the, the stuff news much either. Uh, because it's been ruined. It's, it's it's so like I said with this Andrew Tate thing, he could be a complete piece of shit and need to be buried under a prison, or he could be just not the best guy in the world. What happens using, to common their, sense though? You don't move to 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 a country like this for no reason. No one sure. No one wakes up and says, "I'm moving to Romania. It's beautiful there." Wait till you see well, this place. You never know. There could be tax breaks there. I look, and I'm playing devil's advocate here. You could be completely right, but there could be tax purposes. The reason he moved there, he could have had family there that it just made it easier there for him to have his business here. there. There was a guy I, here that, and this is New York pessimism. Okay. There uh -huh. was a guy here who owned a place around the corner from me. And this place is beautiful. Uh -huh. The first floor is a bar and a, uh, a car museum. Okay. It was called majors. All right. Uh -huh. And when I tell you a car museum, I, Jeremy, I'm telling you that this man's collection was things that one off stuff, old Porsches. All, I, I mean, some of the most classic, amazing cars you've ever seen. I brought a car collector and they're like, you don't understand this guy. What it's just insane what he has here upstairs. They had a roof deck nightclub, the whole thing. OK, I see him come in. I was at an event. I see him come in, and I notice that he's speaking with a Australian accent. Uh huh. And I said to myself, "This guy and all this stuff. This is shady business, right here, my <laughs> friend. You don't move to America. I mean, maybe an Australian would move to America because America's like kind of like maybe they look at it as the big league, or the same way a guy from New York looks at Beverly Hills or something like that. It's like, oh, like your your dreams come true there. But if you're that successful, you can't walk that far away from your investments. You can't be twenty hour flight away." I don't believe well, that. I mean, these days you can because everything's kind of virtual for the most I, part, right? I have to disagree. And sure enough, a year and a half later, there's a big sign on the door. They confiscated everything. The guy's up to no good. Well, I, hey, I don't need look, to be told twice. You moved to look, Romania to create a sex business. You're doing something I probably don't agree with. Look, you you could be absolutely right. Look. You, I know you're a good guy. Yes. The first time you told me, I said, hey, man, how, where did you? And you said, I, I'm in the trans, the import-export business. I'm in transportation. I'm like, this guy's in the fucking mob. You always he's said that. Yeah. He's, people say they're in textiles or they're in the import-exports when they're in some they're bullshit and they want to be vague. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? The first time you told me that, I'm like, ah, this motherfucker's in the mob. But he seems like a good <laughs> dude, so whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the first year I knew you, that's all you talked about. You're oh, like, oh, when is this mob stuff going to break out? I'm like, yeah, I'm like, dude, when am I going to say something and then wake up I the horse head in my bed? It. I appreciate it. But no, yeah. but, but, but no, I mean, look, could you be right? Look, it goes back to what I said. If, if he is truly guilty of any of this stuff, he should be buried under a prison because that's like the worst of the worst, right? Taking advantage of people and doing that stuff. But well, at the same I, I time, think, uh -huh. these days, it's so fucking tough to get to the bottom of the truth, man, because there's so much shit no, but, out there. Well, hold it's on like, a sec. It, I'm not even saying that what he's doing is illegal. I don't uh -huh. like it. But here's what I'm saying to you based on what I gathered. Right. This dude strong arms chicks. 
Well, okay. but I mean, I think is that's that illegal. Wrong? It's not I mean, illegal to be to have the pimp mentality and to I, try to own them. He doesn't try to like, I, you know, but I, help but I them, think these. like, but I think like hitting women and and being aggressive. You is, don't is have illegal. to hit a woman. Uh, 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 most pimps probably don't hit their women very often. What they do is they create a psychology. It, but see, that's that woman that's the key point them. you just made, though. Very often, if it happens once, then you committed a crime. It doesn't have to happen very a, often. It could be uh, through passion, and the girl is so psychologically addicted to this guy. You, you, you know, there are guys that are real good at that at that game. Oh no, you're. I know you're. You could beat them right. all day. No, 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 They'll no. never tell the police you beat them. No, 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 no. I, I, dude, I was almost a police officer, and I used to go on a lot of ride-alongs. And you would arrest the. Oh. You'd go over because he just beat the shit out of his wife, and, they would and never, you'd go yeah. arrest him, and she would jump on your back and try to oh. kick your ass for you oh. handcuffing him. And you're like, hold on, your nose is splattered all over the side uh, of your face. This dude just, and I'm trying to handcuff him and now you're jumping on my back, biting me and shit. Like uh, what is going on? So yeah, there's definitely, there definitely is the whole like Stockholm syndrome victim mentality. Like you get addicted. Yeah. I'm outside of that. I'm sure that's the case. All yeah. I'm saying is if the dude's doing illegal shit, he should, he should be put under, but these days it's so hard to, I don't judgment. think he's doing anything that's that uh, uh, one person did accuse him of actual rape. So I, I can't say that that's not something to be put under the jail for. I'm sure. saying he smacks girls around when they don't do exactly what he wants. He might yeah, strangle I mean, a girl to show his dominance over them or something. They yeah, don't that's, die. That's, no one's dying. No one's even passing out. But it's 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 aggressive. You can't throw someone under the jail for this stuff. You can send them to jail for it. No, but no, no, no. I, I, I just I'm just saying like. I don't if, need to be told. I don't need a court of law to tell me that dude's a scumbag. So why would I promote that on my billion dollar venture? Like, I, I don't get that. Well, I think he does it just because he literally is. He tries to be what I think news should be more often. Right. Which is whether you agree or disagree open with the person, be open minded and give everybody evenly unbiased. a platform unbiased a platform to just say what they have to say. Mm -hmm. He's not placing judgment. And I'm not saying that this is what's happening. I've never even seen what Joe did with this, but I do think in order for it to be free speech and in order for it to, to be an open thing, everybody should look, am I saying I like the fact that these shitheads get a platform? No, but if I'm a true believer in free speech, they get an open platform just sure. as much as the person in the right free speech no, only matters no when disagree. it's happening with something that you don't want to hear. Right. Free speech isn't, oh, well, as long as they're saying what I want, then it's free speech. No, it's when people are saying stuff you don't like is when free speech matters the most. Yeah. So I think giving him a platform to air his grievances and give his side of the story, there's nothing wrong with that. Now, if he's like really taking his side and covering up facts. And no, 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 no. I'm not saying that any, I, 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 there, I think what I see the, 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 the bigger YouTube guys doing with him is uh -huh. not saying that he's innocent per se. They're saying innocent before proven guilty, which is a hundred percent correct. A hundred percent. But what I do see is I see men that are even next generation from us looking at this guy like a stud. They're like, look I... at this guy. If I was younger, I even heard Patrick Bet David say, I could have taken this route. If I had done things differently and not gotten married, I would have been like him too. No, you wouldn't have. I don't think yeah. you would have anyway, based on what I've seen from you, Patrick Bet David. I don't think you would have been a guy who who has a sex business that is so gray area that you move to a country where you know you can pay off people or do something. Yeah. And again, I, I'm alleging that, that that's why he moved there. It is what it is. Yeah. I, I just I was taught to use common sense, and most people sure. in this country have no idea sure. what common sense is anymore. I don't know enough about Andrew Tate, and that shows you how anti-social media I try yeah. to stay out of it. I have only seen little snippets of stuff he said on reels and stuff like that. And I would say 75% of the time he's saying stuff that like, I may not like his approach, but if you get down to the brass tacks of what sure. he's saying, I, I don't totally disagree with what he's saying. Bro, he's smart. And then about 25% of the time he's saying shit that I'm like, ah, eh, that's kind of douchey. Like, why would you say that? Like, For reaction. you know what I mean? Right. He's, again, so it's he's like, smart. He's a great right. marketer. It is. But what it like is. I said, I've had very limited exposure to him. Yeah. So if if I seen more, maybe I would feel much more negatively about him or positively. I, I don't I don't know enough to form a the world a good is filled 
with people like Andrew Tate, except they're not as smart. So <laughs> I, I'm not saying that this guy shouldn't be walking around. I'm just saying that it's obvious to me, and I'm not upset about it. Look, if you can do that and sleep at night and you know no one gets killed, hey, listen, the, the world's filled with a lot worse people than that. I'm just saying to me it's common sense of – you know, you don't go you don't go to a country like that to do business unless like you're saying major tax and even then there's other places you could have gone for tax breaks. You I mean shit, I mean? who knows? I mean, look, could it be shady? A hundred percent. It could be. Could there be a legitimate reason for it? Maybe. I, I don't I don't know enough. You know, you know what I'm saying? I I I'm one of these people that I don't like to even with my common sense, unless I have enough data to apply the common yeah. sense to it, I don't like to make a judgment one way or the other. And I just don't know enough. He, the one about... picture they had of him, he had this poster with like the rules of pimping on it. <laughs> and he's like standing next to it. It was like from back in the day. It was, it was, it was very interesting. Anyway, let's. And hell, let's not... I don't even, tr I don't even trust that shit these days. Sure. You know what I mean? It's like, You're who right. knows? They didn't Photoshop. It's like, fuck man. It's and like, you can't trust anything and, these and days. And that's it. So the trust there's antitrust now. And that's the problem. bro. Anything, that's the problem any, everywhere. Even when you see a picture, you can no longer believe it. You can't. You can listen to an audio clip. You so can't believe you what you hear. What's fact and what's fiction? That's my whole point with like, so everyone's never... going to be living in fictional worlds that they believe. Right. It's scary, bro, because you don't, we're in a place now where if you, everybody gets online and goes to www.imright.com. Man, I tell <laughs> and, you, I must be one of the most moral people that ever walked the face of the planet because I wouldn't say. I, I'm I am very happy with my financial status in life. I'm happy with where I see myself going, and I'm certainly happy how I got here from where I came from financially. Sure. Okay. Sure. That being said, some of these people are worth the amounts of money that are obscene, and they will still do crazy stuff for money. And so yeah. my thing is like, once you get past ten, twenty mil. Well, well, what are you doing? Why? Do, uh, well, it, takes about, a, uh, it takes a certain type of person, right? Because we were talking about this the other day. Uh, just the other day. I don't remember who I was. I think I was talking with my family when they were uh -huh. in town. We were having a discussion over one of the holidays or whatever. And I was talking about Elon Musk. Yeah. And I was like, dude, this guy's got so much money that literally he couldn't spend it all if he tried. Right. right? Like, and that just goes to show. But I Bruce think it takes millions. But it takes that type of person to make that type of money because me – if I got to a quarter of that amount of wealth, I would be out. I would be on a fucking island somewhere <laughs> sipping a drink. Bro, I, you missed my Brewster's Million. Do you remember that movie? I do. Richard but is that Pryor. The, they they uh, give him. They're like, hey, you're gonna inherit like. Oh yeah, he has to dollars. spend like a yeah, million yeah, yeah, dollars, yeah. and and if he spends <laughs> it in a certain amount of time, yeah, yeah. he yeah 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 yeah. And he you couldn't spend the, it right, or he did toy? spend it. You ever see the toy? I've seen them all. I you have to remind toy, me. Man. Is the that where, the one where the little kid goes to the department store that his dad owns, and he's like, "I want him." And they're oh, like, yeah, "Who? Yeah, yeah. The, this and guy, Richard and, Pryor." Yeah. <laughs> which, which, by the way, you probably couldn't make that movie these no, days. No, it's terrible. I tell you, a movie you definitely could make though. these days. It's Blazing Saddles definitely oh. cannot make that movie I, you these know, days. I, I, I don't think I've ever sat down and watched the entire thing front to back. I did years ago, and I'm telling you right now, you could not make that movie these days. <laughs> Like, oh boy. No, 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 no. So, um, I think, but, but anyway, my yeah. point is, uh, yeah, man, like it takes a certain type of person, man, because most people, if they accumulated even close to that kind of wealth, they would just be chilling somewhere. So, I'd okay. be traveling. I wouldn't hearing be worried you, about making money. I wouldn't be doing shady shit to make more. I would just be chilling. About it, hearing you talk about it made, made the answer very clear to me, which is, and it goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Making money is a game. Achieving oh, sure. success is a game. Mm -hmm. You get addicted to playing the game. Mm, hey, some people. Over, over Christmas break, look, I'm running a big operation here now. Like, like I'm sure some people, you know, that own. He's, he's like, uh, I don't want to say <laughs> this. But, uh, kind of a big deal around here. I'm kind of a big <laughs> yeah. deal. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so I'm working a lot, right? Like, I... I do a very good job of balancing that with family and everything else, but but I'm, I'm horrible a lot. at that part. By the way, horrible. It's tough. It's not easy. That's no, something. I don't that think anyone be, is. I don't think anyone's I, good at it. You have to practice. I have the worst work life balance of I've ever. I, I work for myself. I don't 
work for anybody else and I have a far worse work life balance than I ever did well, when I worked for somebody else. You can, I work you all can, the time. Yes, because and then people it's are like, yeah, business. but you only put, but people are like, oh, but you only put out like a video like every eight or nine days. So, shit, sometimes it's a couple weeks. And I'm like, yeah, but videos aren't the only thing I'm doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's not just the video. Pr I, I don't have any people that work for me. It's just me. So I'm doing the planning for the videos, the shooting the videos, the editing the videos, the research for videos. I'm doing products research and development r d on stuff coming up with new ideas but what happens is you play that game and you do all this work and what happens is is christmas vacation rolls around and you're like oh shit, i have to be a regular person and just sit here with my family for two weeks and, and you're like, like you have all, yeah yeah you have, <laughs> and that's why some guys neglect their family because they can't get past that couple days of getting back into the group and you you really it's it's a true balance man it is a it's true a, balance I, I do stop every night at dinner time and make sure I have family with my dinner every single night. So I family do that. With your dinner, dinner with or, your or family. Dinner with my family. Yes. I said that I, I yeah. just had a mini stroke. Yeah, yeah. I have those a lot. Um, I do that every that. single night. Um, I, I think that's an important you thing to, to. To, to check in and, and make sure everybody's doing good and seeing what the kids are up to and all that. Yeah. But oftentimes after dinner, I then come back upstairs and I start working again. Huh. And I'll work until 11, your 12 o'clock at night your, sometimes. Your kids are, your kids are uh, uh, at, at ages where I think that's okay. Well, my, I have a five-year-old, so to, to me, I feel like I'm go I will miss out on this time if I'm not very present often. And uh, oh, didn't it go to, so fast. Shout out to Beanie Siegel. I just saw an interview with this dude, this old rapper I used to listen to. And he's like, um, are you present or are you present? Because you can be there. But are you really there? And I started right. to pay attention to that and, and I try to. <laughs> That's important to, too. It is. So listen, I think this uh, concludes episode one. Hold on, of, I was say, I've got 35 minutes left on my battery. So. Yep. So we're we, good. We've got man. we got time to to uh, wrap it up. Episode one of Local Social Pub, a podcast hosted by Jeremy Sires, Brian Destin. The podcast brought to you by Jeremy Sires and I, Brian Destin. I hope I, you guys I, all had a good day. Enjoyed the time here. Everybody, please put your that. seats and uprights and chairs in upright position. Clean your, clean your aisle, too. <laughs> all right. We'll see you, we'll see you next time.